Hello there, my name is Ranius <coughs> and I switched to Emacs. Yes, also the video is a little late, I guess. I mean, I never said there is a upload schedule, but somehow there was for like two videos and now <coughs> and now I'm a little late, so I guess this one will go up on Tuesday or Wednesday we'll see how it goes so anyway I'm using Emacs now <coughs> of course yeah I was talking a lot about using Vim about I mean I even have my own Vim configurations two separate ones and <coughs> I was planning and I even started making some videos about my Vim workflow and so on. But here we are. I'm on Emacs now. So why is that? <coughs> to be to be honest, I have been mm, trying out Emacs again like at least once in a few months <coughs> but why so there are few reasons actually one of the reasons is of course org mode for a long time I used Novim plugin for org mode but it's good but it's of course not like complete orc mode <coughs> as the one you get in Emacs so I was really hoping to make it work for me so I could go back to using org I mean Quite recently, actually, I've switched away completely from org mode, started using Markdown, <coughs> and now I'm switching back to org. Yeah. And other thing <coughs> is like uh, my Vim configurations, apart from them being a little bit I mean quite a bit inspired by NVChad at least uh, I like yoinked uh, some key bindings from there but most of these key bindings are actually yoinked from Doom Emacs which I used before I started using Vim full time not to mention a short moment when I was using VS Code <coughs> in between but <coughs> in general I was kind of trying to make Vim more like Emacs so <coughs> switching to it finally is not like a big deal I think but maybe for some people it might be because let's be really really honest uh, my Vim or and Neo Vim configurations on GitHub are probably not going to be uh, getting any new features I mean I will probably be updating some uh, the plugins and stuff but but I'm not even sure if I'm not even sure if I really should still do it because obviously I won't be daily driving any of these configurations so I wouldn't be really sure that they actually work correctly right <coughs> So, uh, 
what else what else so let me go to my configuration maybe yeah so this is like doom emax in it l where you basically just you know uncomment or comment the modules of of doom emax <coughs> to enable them or disable right as you can see i don't really have that lot of them enabled or maybe i have yeah so but the more important config file here is actually config el so <coughs> what we have here so of course I have some mm. yeah okay so maybe uh, while I'm talking about this I will also talk about what problems I had before with Emacs which made me not really use it <coughs> because every time there were the same problems, no matter if I used Dumi Max or I was making a my own configuration, which I did. The problem was always pretty much the same. One problem was that the file search wasn't really that great, but uh, at that time I didn't really know how to use it right okay as you can see i have some customizations to the console to grab which aren't really that needed for it to be useful but i didn't really dive too much into how the things work actually when i was doing my own config i got to know a little bit more of this but well but the problem always was the same and it's this the file watchers in lsp mode and actually it's largely my own fault because i was like mm, convinced that i need these watchers for the lsp to work right but guess what I disabled it and there are no problems and let me tell you what exact problems there were I have really huge projects really huge projects I work on on, on Magento there are tens of thousands of files in each project so when this thing was enabled <coughs> when LSP will, would start it would uh, like I'm not really sure but it was just freezing for a while when it was uh, indexing something like starting all these watchers I guess on each file also there was always a warning when it started and it was a little annoying <coughs> but other than that at some point I had Emacs just crash because of this so it wasn't really good experience another problem and actually Vim or more specifically NeoVim with LSP has the exact same problem because if I open in one instance like more than one project they are not like separate to the uh, to do to the LSP so both both uh, project folders are used by the by the language server so I have some weird 
uh, code navigation between two separate projects and so on but you know it never were a problem in NeoVim <coughs> because I was always starting a separate instance for each project because it starts quickly and it's not a big deal and with Emacs I was always told that I need to run the daemon daemon <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I have to run the daemon and use the Emacs client. So technically I was always I always had the one instance of Emacs running. So I had all the projects opened at the same time on this single instance <coughs> and it was a big mess. And I know it's not exactly a problem with Emacs because I I could just start separate instances of this. I mean, there never was a point that I would be, I don't know, I would be using so many projects at the same time. It usually is like two, sometimes three projects at the same time because, because of reasons, okay? So, so I just figured out some script to like still have the Emacs, Emacs uh, daemon for like my default Emacsing, let's say, like opening some some random files, some maybe configuration and also the terminal emulator <laughs> because lately I mainly <coughs> I mainly use Viterm as my terminal emulator and it's quite nice actually it's well it let's say that it renders power line better than alacrity but yeah, but it's not what I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to troll anyone because I know many of you guys like Alacrity and okay, it's fine. I just have some problems with it, okay? Anyway, so I figured out a little script that maybe I will show you. Oh no, no, okay. Let's be, um, let's go in the right order. Because at first I didn't figure out any script. I was just using Emacs in the terminal exactly the same way I used Vim. So I was just starting a Tmax session with Emacs <coughs> instead of Vim in the terminal. It was working okay, it was really fine. It actually hooked me up on Emacs that I've decided okay, I need to make it just work as a GUI application. So then I figured out the little script which I will now show you. I will close this window because that was my default Emacs daemon. And now here I have Wofi. I have my projects here. I go to dot files. It starts a new daemon because it wasn't running already. And yeah, I'm in my dot .files project. So let's go and see the script I was talking about. And it is this Emaxifier. <laughs> of course, the script at first was a little dumb. I mean, it is still a little dumb. And I'm looking to um, change it because right now it uses like a Tmaxifier layouts to read the directory from them to uh, just run the Emacs client. Also, it if it is run as Emaxifier dash and W it starts kitty and the terminal version of Emacs. <coughs> but are we mainly talking about the GUI? So it gets uh, I mean there's of course Emac Emacs client comma command C for creating a new frame, new window, 
then we check uh, 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 then we check the parameter that it is given which should either I mean it should be a mm, uh, 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 what the fuck am I even talking about Jesus Christ and just okay we will cut this out so first we check if there is a mm, option given so the first parameter in the script if yes then it's just getting the uh, okay it turns out I don't understand my own script sorry <coughs> anyway what it does is if there is this parameter it just get puts this parameter as a selected session otherwise it it's doing ls on the layouts gets the names from it and runs wofi which is like wayland version of rofi which isn't really uh, that uh, as nice as rofi but it works pretty well it's okay it's fine and you already have seen it uh, when i started the dot files project here okay so then if the session is called main it runs this function instead of doing other things so this function just calls the command which is emacs client dash c and it adds the it, it is generally needed to give this parameter dash a with empty string so when the daemon isn't running it's starting it and the dash s parameter is giving the name for the for the daemon which is my username in this case <coughs> and it opens uh, home directory then and when there's another when the session isn't main then it just gets the um, gets the directory from the session file from tmaxifier which is a suboptimal I guess or maybe it's fine if I would at some point want to use it in the terminal so it gets the directory and if the directory exists then it opens a session with a daemon called after the session and it opens the session directory right and otherwise it runs the, the just the does the default daemon i mean otherwise if the session there is not doesn't exist okay so that's that uh, it, it took way too long to explain this script oh so I already explained that I used at first the terminal version then I decided okay I think I really want you know the full Emacs experience and here we are I created this little script that lets me just create separate sessions I mean only drawback might, might be that you know when I just close close it then the daemon is still running so at some point I need to just go and mm, at some point I need to just go and and kill it so as you can see I have dot files running and my default one running as well <coughs> So it runs some uh, language server for bash <laughs> but it's not a big deal I can just do it and it's not like there's a I, 
I, I run it very often and there's so many of these that it would like I don't know make my computer slow like eat too much memory or 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 whatnot because you know nothing is really happening in that demon it, demon it is just just running there okay so <clears throat> Okay, so move on from this section, which apparently was very, very difficult for me for some reason. So what really is better in Emacs? <coughs> How Emacs is better than Vim? So first things first, I already, I already said it, it's org mode. No org mode plugin is going to really replace or just emulate what org mode is in emacs okay it's just it's just really good and i really like it and maybe i will make a video about it but i guess there is already a lot of videos about org mode another thing that maybe not be very convincing to like vim users but Emacs is even more customizable than Vim. And I will explain why. So, both Vim and NeoVim are configured with either VimScript or Lua. And also every extension is written in VimScript or Lua. Of course, there are also some Python and Ruby bindings for uh, for both of them, but but none of these editors is written in any part in VimScript, Lua, Ruby, or Python, and Emacs only like the core of Emacs, the really small part of the whole program. Is written in C. The rest of Emacs is written in Emacs Lisp. So the same language that is used to configure Emacs, it also is used to write plugins for Emacs. And what that actually means. So you basically can change literally everything in Emacs. You can disable like built-in packages replace them, disable, I already said disable, just can change literally everything. You can make it into pretty much anything you want. Of course, you might have like, create some of these customizations yourself because, you know, there is really a lot of Emacs packages, but there's always some weird case, okay? Because I said that everything, okay? So, but with Vim and NeoVim, you have the core that you can't really change. You have the, the editor itself. It's not like written in a language that you use to, to write plugins, to configure. So, but to be fair also, Vim is just an editor by design and it's good but also it's a little limiting but what I mean with the fact that Emacs is basically written in Lisp it also means that every every package every plugin that you use it's like becomes like equally part of Emacs as the the core packages that are built in which isn't the case for vim because you know there's no lua or vim script in the core i mean okay maybe you will find that there is some uh, like core configurations or something like that that it's actually in it but that's that's not the point okay the point is that a lot of packages community packages for Emacs just became part of Emacs core because 
Everything is written in Lisp. And I know, I know most of people will probably are probably not really mm, familiar with Lisp because you know, we all know more, most popular languages are, are Python, some C-like languages, which includes pretty much most of the most popular languages. What I mean C-like, that the syntax is similar to C. And Lisp is like totally another story, which might be not really, not really enticing. But if you spend some time, learn it a little, it's really nice. And you have like more feeling of it being uh, a proper programming language. I mean, okay, Lua is literally a programming language, but I don't... That may be a question of preference. Of course, Lua is way better than Vimscript. But it, it is a little weird. I mean, I know how it sounds when I compare it to Lisp, which is super weird for, like, most of you probably. But you know what I mean? I mean that Lisp seems... Emacs Lisp seems like a complete programming language where you can really easily do some stuff like parse some strings and stuff in Lua it's, it's weird, it's weird but it's just a question of preference so to be fair let's talk about what really is better in Vim compared to Emacs so of course Vim is smaller, is faster also, it is easier to configure because you actually can make Vim into a very usable editor with a little configuration, especially in NeoVim because it comes with more like sane defaults. And yeah, I, it would be... <laughs> I mean, some of the advantages of Vim are also like uh, the flows of Vim but it really depends on personal preference at this point. So Vim is just Vim and Emacs can be pretty much anything. And it's good, but it's also maybe bad because you maybe want some more fun functionalities from your editor, okay? So Emacs, Emacs requires a lot of configuration to make it, to make it yours because that's really the point of Emacs and and with Vim Vim has its way the famous Vim motions which I also use in Doom Emacs and actually you should too no matter what editor you are using pretty much every single editor offers a Vim mode Modal editing is quite nice, you should try it, but to the point, so Vim already has its way, of course Emacs have some, have default key bindings, uh, but uh, I don't think there's many people that really use Emacs just default without changing anything, because it's literally not the point, so if you want to use Emacs, you just need to know what you want from your editor. That's just that. I just realized this trying Emacs for like fourth time or maybe fifth. I mean, trying to switch to Emacs. I realized it because I've configured NeoVim from scratch and the and the end result was uh, kind of like Doom Emacs, but not fully Doom Emacs with some missing stuff. <coughs> so it's really like easier to make Doom Emacs Doom Emacs than to make NeoVim Doom Emacs, okay? But the point is to just know what you want, what you need, what modules you want to disable, 
what modules you want to enable, if you want to change something, what key bindings do you like, what functionalities you actually want. You might need to even write some of your own functions, which I did. I haven't really shown this, some basic configurations here. Like I literally just implemented uh, sync with the server, which is pretty much a copy um, from a Vim plugin because it just uses a sync script that is run after uh, the file is saved and that and that's all and it works way better than any upload plugin I tried if, even the one that is that is built into Dumi Max. It's just simple and it just works. Also, I have some function to SSH to a server in Viterm. Beacon. It's like this little nice thing that... Okay, I need to scroll over here, as you can see. But if you watched any, like, Emacs video, about, especially about configuring Emacs, most of these configurations use Beacon. Yeah, so what else, what else? So there's a little functions yoinked from somewhere, from Reddit, I believe, to run a command in, in Viterm. So, uh, so there is some configurations. There are some additional functions which you maybe don't need. Maybe you don't uh, want to use it like this, but I re I literally use it to to uh, to run some programs just in the terminal directly from Emacs. Like I don't know, beat up again, let's say. And I have a new terminal window with beat up. And also, it might be a little controversial with with Emacs people. I don't use Magit or Magit. I just use LazyGit. <coughs> As you can see, I just open a terminal window with with NeoGit in it. <laughs> also, as you can see, I haven't. Uh, pushed some changes to my new fetch configuration because I recently kind of distro hop to Arco Linux but that's not the subject here and yeah it checks if it's a window or if it's in terminal if it's in terminal then it tries to run lazy git in tmax split more V term and there are just key bindings. Actually I don't really like these key bindings, I need to change them. <laughs> but other than that, just some few changes there. This is a file with a license key to PHP LSP server, so I'm not showing this to you. And yeah, that's my like advice. If you want to use Emacs, you should know what you want from your editor. Because otherwise you would be stumbling around a lot and you might end up not liking Emacs. Because I mean, at least it was a case with me. I didn't really know what to basically do with it and now I know and it's just pretty nice also another nice thing but you maybe already seen it if you ever watched any Emacs video meta x alt x opens like command palette in in air quotes which you can't see because it just shows you every single command you can run and it's really useful when you're starting with Emacs you can just 
search for something you want to do and you can you may, might just find the right function it will show you the key binding if it has one of course in vanilla GNU Emacs you, you won't be getting this this is a consult with or or vertical I mean it's vertical and consult together but I'm not really sure which one is directly responsible for this looking like that okay <laughs> so this video was a little messy I was late and I wanted I really wanted to make it this video and here we are so I hope it, it wasn't too chaotic and yeah I guess that's that so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one bye bye